You know you need a trigger pull gauge if you're going to adjust or replace your trigger, but how much do you need to spend to get an accurate one? Well, today we're going to look at an inexpensive mechanical gauge and compare it to a digital gauge on this episode of Moondog Industries. This is a Wheeler Engineering trigger pull scale or gauge that, and I bought this about a year and a half ago when I bought my CZ457. I was adjusting the trigger on that and I needed to find out was I doing a good job? Was I bringing it down to the trigger pull weight that uh, uh, I was aiming for? And of course you need to have some sort of gauge to determine that. And I bought this, well, to be honest, because it was the cheapest one uh, that seemed to have any reasonable um, reviews for accuracy. So this cost me about $20 um, about a year and a half, two years ago. And uh, that was during the pandemic. Um, I don't know how much more expensive it's become because of the inflation and the current administration. I don't know, but uh, it's still probably the least expensive, uh, fairly accurate trigger pull gauge. And as you can see, it comes in this cheap clamshell packaging. The instructions are actually printed on the back of this. They didn't even bother with an instruction manual. And um, um, that's because this is a pretty easy device to, to use. Uh, it's pretty simple in construction. It's just a plastic tube with a metal spring on the inside and, and a plunger there. It's got this uh, yellow indicator slide and, along with this printed gauge here. And the plunger on the inside is attached to this metal arm um, with a hook end that's uh, got rubber eyes there so it doesn't mar your trigger or trigger guard as you're using it. And you basically, if I'm using my finger here as a proxy for a trigger, you hook it around your trigger and you gently and steadily pull on the back of your wheeler gauge there and when you feel or hear your trigger break you let off and that slider stops at the maximum resistance which in this case was a uh, about um, a pound and a quarter uh, so that means that you're you have a pound and, or three pound and a, and a quarter trigger pull so and you can do that any number of times just slide that back and you pull on until you hear it break and then you look and you can see that, oh, it's just a hair over three pounds. So, um, because basically this is essentially a bathroom scale sideways and miniaturized. Um, because uh, traditional bathroom scales work with uh, internal springs and those springs provided resistance uh, with a known quantity of resistance and that measures your weight. And this is the same same case. You're measuring three pounds of resistance on that trigger. Uh, so you could effectively take a, a string around your trigger and put a three pound weight on it and that would break your trigger as opposed to putting a one pound weight that wouldn't break your trigger. That's how you determine trigger pull weight. That seems pretty obvious. Anyway, let's see how accurate this is. And uh, is it? Well, we need to find out by using, uh, we can easily use a known weight and compare it by just using this to lift up that weight. So let's do that next. We're going to use this can of Diet Coke as our reference weight, and it weighs exactly 13.14 ounces. And the reason we're using a Coke is because they're pretty consistent whether you buy one in San Francisco or a Piggly Wiggly in Sarasota, Florida, or a bodega in New York City. All right, so we have our reference weight here. We know this is exactly 13.14 ounces, and if this uh, reads that accurate, we should be... Where is 13.14 ounces? It should be somewhere between uh, the one pound indicator here and the next uh, hash mark there. So we'll see. We're going to just hook this to the end of our gauge with our paper clip here, which is just our little anchor point, and just gently lifting up on the can, just barely off the table. You just need to just get it off the table and gently set it back down. And let's see, what is that indicator? Yeah, can you see that there? That is just under the one pound, one pound line. So let's just see if that's, let's just try it one more time, another time and just see, let's get an average here. Okay, and we're just gonna set that back down again. And let's look at that. Yeah, just, just under. So, that says to me this is actually pretty darn accurate for you know fairly light for under a pound uh, a weight and you know 13 ounces is just three ounces away from being a pound. In fact, this was just a hair over uh, 13 ounces. So, yeah, this is actually pretty darn accurate. But you know the real question is um, 
Is this as accurate and easy to use as, say, a digital trigger pull gauge like this Lyman here? Of course, the only way to, to determine that is to actually try it on a trigger. So let's do that next. All right, so we have our wheeler here and we have our test bed here, which is our Ruger Precision Rimfire. Now this is a uh, factory stock rifle. Um, uh, I've made no internal uh, modifications or uh, um, swap outs with any of the components in internally. And, and any other additions to this are purely minor cosmetic, like adding this to yourself, cheek rest and a scope. Uh, so performance wise, this is uh, completely factory. Uh, it does come uh, with uh, the original trigger is adjustable. So it comes from the factory at two and a half pounds and you can adjust it up to five pounds, which is more typical to a hunting rifle or down to two pounds, which hopefully if I did things correctly, it should be down to two pounds. Now, uh, when I originally tested this uh, using this wheeler, actually, I was getting a reading about actually closer to three pounds, not two and a half. So this is definitely reading things a little bit heavier uh, it's saying that it, that the poundage is heavier than it is and that's assuming that it was two and a half pounds from the factory so um, anyway let's see what it's registering now all right so before we start our testing let's just check the safety condition of our firearm here and we can remove this chamber flag so we know that the chamber is empty and just checking to see here the uh, magwell is absolutely empty so we know the firearm is unloaded and safe to handle of course we always practice safe uh, firearms uh, handling here on this channel so let's just close that bolt and it is off of manual safety and let's reset our wheeler scale here and let's just insert that into the trigger guard and i'm just going to give this a gentle tug at the back here until we hear our trigger break all right and we just back off and if you can see here, it is just a hair over two pounds. So let's just check that, make sure that is correct. Let's see if it's consistent. If, we have, if it's consistent, then we have a good indication that this is the correct measurement. All right, gentle tug back, not jerky. There we go. And this one is just a bit over. So this is a two, and uh, three eighths of a pound. So still pretty close, but this is definitely a heavier pull. So let's just try that again, see where we're at and give this a gentle tug. Oh, there we go. And we are just a hair over two pounds. So let's just give that one more test to see where we're at because you know, averages are always the best way to determine our trigger pull here. So, and this one again is uh, just under two and a half pounds. So, um, just by basing our averages here, we're getting a, somewhere between two and uh, just a, under two and a half pounds. So, uh, splitting the difference there, uh, two and a quarter pounds. So, that's actually pretty good. Uh, so, but the question is, is it accurate? Now we saw with our weighing our can uh, as our reference weight that this is actually pretty consistent in uh, giving us a weight just under two pounds for that can, which is what the can weighed, uh, 13 ounces. So, but is it as accurate as, uh, as a digital scale? Let's find out. Um, let's try testing it out versus our Lyman here. This is our digital scale and let's just reset that trigger. And we're going to put that in the trigger guard there. And let's just hit the ready button. All right. And give it a gentle tug. Two pounds, 1.2 ounces. So just a hair over two pounds. Um, let's just try it again, just to make sure. Two pounds, 1.2 ounces. So that was pretty consistent. So yeah, it is just a hair over two pounds. Now, this is, it's pretty close. This was pretty close. It's not as exact, 
but at least we were definitely in the ballpark. So the question is, is this as easy to use as our digital gauge? I would say yes, actually in some cases much easier to use because you're just basically sliding this back. Is it as accurate? Mm, yes and no. I would say it's good enough for your average shooter, certainly good enough for me. I mean, uh, I'm just wanting to know if the uh, trigger, drop-in trigger that I put in is, is as light or somewhere in the neighborhood as light as uh, it's advertised to be. Is it heavier? Is it lighter? Uh, is the adjustment that I made to this from two and a half pounds to two pounds, is, is a, uh, did I actually make it lighter? And uh, even just with this gauge, I was able to tell that yes, it was. And, uh, but is it exactly as uh, precise as this to the ounces? No, no, it isn't. So if you're really, uh, really uh, o OCD about uh, ounces, then I would definitely recommend getting a digital gauge. But if you're the average, average Joe and want to get a, an inexpensive uh, trigger pull gauge just to see if you're in the ballpark. And certainly, to be honest, I can't tell the difference between a two pound trigger pull and a two and a quarter pound trigger pull. It's just too close for me. But then again, you know, uh, I'm just your average shooter. But uh, so yeah, I would actually also say that this is definitely worth it at 20 bucks, a third of the price of this. I would say, yeah, this is a good value too. So then again, you know, that's my call. Uh, if you have a, a different opinion, please leave me a comment. But if you're interested in picking up one of these Wheeler uh, trigger scales, trigger gauges, well, um, I'll include links actually to both of these products uh, in my blog article at moondogindustries.com. And you can find a link to that article in the video description. And uh, use that link, it helps support this channel. And if you wanna help to support this channel, um, and that's absolutely free, you can just simply hit the like and subscribe button. Um, it, helps you because you're telling the algorithm the kind of content that you like to watch and they'll recommend more videos like this as opposed to, I don't know, BTS videos. But it'll also uh, recommend this video to other folks like you. So you're helping me out, so win-win. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Stay safe. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.